we're moving on to the valedictory session on critical factors and forces that will shape communication in 2021. Let us put our hands together. Join me in welcoming Ms. Catherine Devani, Deputy Managing Director and Head of Health, we from UK. More over to you, Ms. Devani. Very warm welcome, Catherine. Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's it's a pleasure to be here with you, even if we can only be together virtually. Um, so thank you so much for the IPRCCC for inviting me to speak to you today. Um, they've asked me to bring a perspective from other markets to your conference, so that's what I'm going to do. The, the focus of the presentation is to look at how social movements are taking centre stage consumer behaviors and expectations are shifting and forcing brands to own up to their past mistakes and adapt their products and services to a more socially distanced and inclusive world. Um, so I'm going to look at how the impact of last year um, has um, shaped communications on a global level, um, look at the trends that we think are relevant for 2021 and steps that we believe are important for brands to thrive in, in the next normal. Um, and to do this, I've used a combination of research from We Communications and our partners, um, Quartz and the Foresight Factory, um, as well as including real life examples from brands which are leading with purpose to make a positive impact on the world. Um, so even before COVID, um, the world demanded a new way to lead, to communicate and to work. Increasingly, it all comes back to purpose. In 2019, the media called it the year of protests because of the crowds of people who are marching in the streets supporting issues they believed in. And 2020 was the same, with people marching on issues from equality to climate change. Some estimates say that the Black Lives Matter protests turned out more people than any other movement in the United States history. So I think we can see that activism is on the rise. Um, in the UK, dance group Diversity performed on Britain's Got Talent with a piece that supported the Black Lives Matter movement. Cue almost 25,000 complaints to the UK broadcasting regulator Ofcom. ITV, the UK broadcaster of Britain's Got Talent, defended the performance, the group and the message on social media and in print. And, and I love the message that they ran. They said, we are changed by what we see just as we are changed when we are seen. The lines taken from a powerful purpose-led ad campaign that the broadcaster launched earlier in the year. So social action is a powerful force and one that we've seen with our clients at We Too. In Australia, for example, we've had a three-year partnership with non-profit Plastic Free Foundation, which encourages people to reduce plastic use and is the driving force behind Plastic Free July. And this year, even with the global focus on Black Lives Matter and the pandemic, um, the plastic free movement drove a record 326 million people to participate in the challenge, which was a 30% increase over last year's participation. Every year we invest in the Brands in Motion study at WE, and it's our research um, that helps us understand audience expectations in brands uh, and guides our clients as, as to how they can respond. In 2019, 83% said they believed brands could be capable of providing stability in uncertain times. Well, I think we can safely say that we've experienced enough uncertainty recently. One such example of a brand taking a stance is Avon. So committed to help end violence against women and, and girls globally, this was a critical moment for Avon, Avon in, in India to introduce, introduce its promise through action. It's not a pleasant subject for anyone to discuss and the temptation might be to look the other way. But Avon has leaned into its purpose and given a voice to the voiceless, talking about a subject which some consider unspeakable. Avon, the Avon Foundation for Women and their communications partners, Avian We, launched the Isolated Not Alone campaign. They worked with NGOs fighting against gender-based domestic violence, rallied support from influencers and hosted live sessions on Instagram to address questions around legal aid and mental health. Overall, more than 15,000 clients received health services, including screening and counselling. $122,000 in grants to frontline services to support women and children in need and at risk, and more than 2.9 million users were reached. 
Consumers are clearly asking for meaningful action over lip service or rhetoric. Um, and we, we hear so often in our society referencing this now as virtue signaling. Another example of a brand taking a stance and meaningfully acting with purpose is, of course, Microsoft. Last year, Microsoft announced its bold goal to go carbon negative by 2030 and then taking it one step further to pledge that by 2050, they will remove all carbon that they have emitted as a company since they were founded in 1975. We are really proud um, at We Communications to ensure that the widest audience were reached with this announcement from consumers through to public policy makers. And the timing of the announcement a week before Davos also made sure that maximum exposure with the final uh, uh, with the financial and business community was achieved. For so many brands, the pandemic has been a forcing function. It's driven companies to articulate and commit to a purpose that speaks to the most foundational human needs, not just a product's utility. But the real test of a true and resilient purpose-led brand is how its purpose comes to life inside the company and for its people. We have seen a real uptake in client re requests for support on employee engagement over the last year, and we think this is only set to increase. Without employee engagement, your company's purpose is hollow. Of course, your employees are your biggest ambassadors for your purpose. In some cases in the past couple of years, there's been a huge disconnect between outward displays of purpose and internal negligence. As IBM CEO Arvind Krishna put it, purpose and profit go together, reinforcing each other. PayPal CEO Dan Shulman took it one step further. I'd actually argue if you don't have a purpose as a company, you will not succeed from a results perspective. When brands pledge allegiance to purpose for their customers' benefit and then fail to apply that commitment internally, the hypocrisy undermines their credibility and erodes trust and ultimately impacts performance. For two years, we has partnered with the publisher Quartz Insights to learn how communications leaders can help guide brands to a more purposeful future. Last year, only 50% of respondents said employee engagement programs were meeting their people's needs, and only 20% are prioritizing investments to address factors like emotional health, equity, and inclusion and culture. That's not just an HR or internal comms misstep. That is a missed business opportunity. In the face of uncertainty and hardship, um, we have all seen too many companies pull funding from internal programs, go dark on their employees because they just don't know what to say, or simply let employee engagement efforts fall by the wayside as other priorities feel much more urgent to them. This year, businesses are wondering how to be resilient in their purpose when they're constantly in re reactive mode, concerned about crisis response, reputation management and, and relevance. An excellent example of how a business has not just ignored the employee um, engagement in the light of these, these pressures is um, HSBC's commercial banking arm. Last year, they established Drumbeat, which is their employee engagement campaign and provides employees with regular newsletters and employee resources. But beyond an email, this also includes videos, podcasts, links to external content, question and answer sessions, and, and so much more as well. It also includes engagement from different leaders through the business, making sure that employees are getting information from the sources who matter most to them. Um, HSB discovered that 90% of employees surveyed found the drumbeat letter useful, and in the first round of comms to go out after the COVID outbreak, their clicks to resources increased by more than 100%. For many brands, the pandemic has been a forcing function. It's driven them to articulate a purpose that speaks to the most foundational human me needs um, and, and not just that, that product utility. Kantar recently reported that brands who are able to deliver purpose in an ethical way saw their value grow twice as much as average brands during the initial weeks and months of COVID. Intel has been um, really clear about the steps it is taking to help fight the pandemic and communicate the impact of its product's unique value proposition. 
they've been very clear about their purpose in the world and, and how they, they're staying true to that in the current environment. Um, its Scale to Serve program helps hospitals install a platform that expands um, bed capacity in the ICU and care for patients. The company has also collaborated with medical device uh, company Medtronic to enable clinicians to adjust ventilator settings outside the ICU to reduce healthcare workers' exposure to patients recovering from, from COVID. A really important, tangible demonstration of, of how um, technology is improving health. Um, scale to Serve is a great example of, of digital transformation of healthcare, which is happening across all countries. Digital innovation in healthcare is essential to improve patient outcomes, reduce waste and improve safety. However, and I feel particularly strongly about this, there is a real danger that as we digitise healthcare systems, we leave behind some of the most vulnerable in our society. People who are either lack the technology or the ability to navigate digital appointments, online medical records, um, prescription services, as well as patient support programmes, which increasingly live online. Our partners at the Foresight Factory identified a key trend for 2021, presence-free connections. And this speaks to the point about digital equality. The legacy of COVID-19 will recognise that modern life no longer requires us to be physically present. Um, and 2020 was definitely a year of cyber firsts as COVID-19 opened our eyes to digital alternatives in work, in, in life and beyond. <laughs> and removed geographical barriers, accelerated tech adoption rates amongst all age groups. And this provides opportunities for brands to use new platforms to engage with audiences. However, and I think this is really important, it also requires brands to take responsibility for considering the accessibility of their communications, particularly for brands in healthcare, financial services and, and energy. How can you ensure that you are not contributing to the digital divide? How can you work hard to ensure that the more vulnerable in our societies are not left behind? Well, one way to tackle the issue of engagement is to seek input and canvas opinion from um, advocacy groups that represent these people. Even better still, if you can actually work with the customer themselves. The stakeholder customer is another important trend for 2021. In 2020, Foresight Factory found that 63% of, of global consumers would like it if their favourite brand asked for their ideas for new products, and 76% expected companies to use their feedback to improve their offerings. Moving forward, the, uh, the rise of stakeholder capitalism, an approach demanding businesses be run for multiple stakeholders, including customers, clients, employees, communities, and the natural environment, will keep brand purpose center stage. Engaging effectively with all your stakeholders is going to build trust, which is important in a world facing a crisis of trust created by the perfect storm of COVID-19 disruption, increasing polarizing politics, and the rise of digital misinformation. Brands should prepare to offer new levels of transparency as consumers look for new ways to validate claims of all kinds. The trust economy is thriving. However, instead of seeing this as an added box to tick, brands need to embrace the opportunity by sharing more information with the world from ingredients to carbon footprints to salaries, um, brands can differentiate themselves and strengthen their purpose and messaging. Together with transparency is authenticity, of course. Not only are co consumers more willing to trust when brands communicate in an authentic manner, there's no faster way to trust, erode trust than creating gaps between your brand's words and its actions. Just this final example, I think, is, is a really lovely way of seeing that come to life. Um, it comes from Italian food brand Napolina. Although the brand has been tackling illegal labour in tomato supply chain for years, an increase in media and shopper attention ar around the issue has created a need for added transparency. So in response, Napolina recently launched the Product Passport, which is a digital experience showing consumers the journey of a product from right through the supply chain, from farm to supermarket. 
The product passport um, can be accessed through QR codes printed on the products um, and is based on verified data collected through audits, GPS mapping and blockchain traceability programs. The sustainability storytelling strategy has helped Mapolina connect with shoppers while also providing evidence to support their global goal of becoming the most trusted FMCG supplier in Europe. So in conclusion, um, 2020 has been an incredible leveler in so many ways, forcing us all to reflect on many things as companies, brands and individuals, our behaviours, our values and purpose and how we communicate. Communicating with the world is never an easy task and the world is in turmoil, um, which has made it even trickier. We know it's tempting to retreat from purpose and focus on survival messaging, um, but the top trends that I've shared and, and the case studies that, that I found really inspiring show that leading with purpose and committing to positive action and remaining authentic will put brands in the best position to survive and thrive in 2021. Thank you. Happy to take any questions. Thank you, Kathleen. Uh, because it's a virtual format, we are uh, not taking a Q&A session here. But thank you for sharing those insights and your case studies here with us. Thank you for your time. I know it was uh, you know, a little delayed, but thank you so much for being here with us. You're very welcome. Thank you so much for having me.